Hello, 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 my family. This is Tracy coming to share another word with you guys. I pray that everyone that everyone is doing well on this beautiful Monday morning, even if it's snowing, raining, whatever is happening, wherever you are, we are to be grateful, right? It's actually a little cool where I am, a little, little, little cooler, all right? I can tell the seasons are changing. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God, okay? The seasons are changing. Let that get into your spirit. The seasons are changing. I feel that. I really do. Listen, you guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. I mean it. I promise I mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you so much for allowing the Lord to use you, right? Whether you're praying, okay? Supporting me, just giving me um, encouraging words. Listen, reading some of that helped me get through, you know? I'm, I'm telling you, it helps me to get through. And of course, thank you so much for all of the seeds that you sow. I... Um, God is good, okay? And of course, to Him be, belong all the glory. Let's pray right quick before I get into it. Father, we thank you as always, for you are good, you are holy, and you are righteous, and you are worthy of all praise, glory, and honor, and it belongs to you and you alone. Daddy, we thank you for this day. We thank you for provision and protection. We thank you for redemption and restoration. We thank you for peace, peace of mind, and joy, oh God. We thank you for all of the wonderful things that you do. We thank you for chastisement, for helping us to get back in line, oh God, when we get out of line. We thank you so much. You are so good and so great. We give you all the praise, the glory, and the honor. Father, help me to decrease that you would increase and say whatever it is that you want to say. Open up our spiritual ears. Open up our hearts, oh God, to receive your word, Father God, in Jesus' name. And help us to put all of the principles that you are showing us into practice not just hearers but doers of the word in the name of jesus we command every foul demon every spirit that's not like the living god i command you to go right now every witch and every warlock i command you to get out in jesus name and by the blood of the lamb you have no place here i decree it and declare it i command it i command it to be so in jesus name on every platform not just this one but every platform that represents jesus christ I command you to go. You have no place here, devil. Get out in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Father, we thank you so much. Listen, you guys, I'm so excited about this word that the Lord has given me. Sorry, forgive me for this hair because, um, yeah. Anyways, I'm going to try and focus. Um, the Lord gave me the title yesterday and then just kind of a little bit to write down, like a little note so that we could just get into it. I was tired yesterday. Y'all, I was, I, was, I was fighting the good fight of faith. I was fighting the good fight of faith, okay? And it was something. Yesterday was something else. The enemy was trying so hard to discourage me, to steal my joy, to make me complain in the waiting. Remember, we cannot complain in the wait. We, we have to find it. And so um, I just have to be honest and, and say that I was fighting um, the good fight. And so finally, after some a few hours, listen, I thank God that it did not take as long as it did before me waiting in the car. So I give God glory for that as well. I want to say so. Oh, and I had to change my room. So as I started to settle down, like at 7, 730, something like that, I heard a noise like, yeah, the blood of Jesus. And so I, something like that, I just wanted to get into bed and I was going to read, pull the covers back and my covers were dirty. Sister girl had to bring it in. My covers were dirty. I just wanted to say things. Not curse words, but I just really wanted to say things. So I called the office trying to keep my composure so I won't be yelling at the man on the other end because he didn't clean the room. Okay? And so I had to remember. So I'll call. I say, hi, this is Tracy in room XYZ. Um, whatever room I was in before, 405, that's what room I was in, in room 405, and um, my covers are dirty, <laughs> I just went in, excuse me, my covers are dirty, okay, I need something to happen tonight, I can't, I can't sleep on this, I don't care if I have Lysol, whatever, spraying it down, 91% alcohol, my covers are dirty, so anyway, so we go through this whole, um, this whole thing and I had to change rooms and I had to keep my composure but I do want to say this so listen sometimes we may not want the fight so to speak right 
And, um, and so you're like, you know what, if I say something, it's going to disrupt my spirit and I'm trying to stay focused. Let me tell y'all something. There comes a time where you have to speak up. You, you can't just let anything ride because you're trying to keep, um, you know what I'm saying? A certain, you can say things and still stay in place with God in alignment. You can speak up. So for example, if you have a child, right? Because sometimes some people don't want some people don't want issues, so they don't say anything to their kids. Oh, I don't want this fight. You never want the fight. I don't understand that. But if they are out of order and out of line, it is your responsibility to speak up. If something's not right, you got to speak up. And so last night, I could have just said, now I do that with my daughter. My, my daughter cannot walk in anybody's house and not speak. Yes, I said it on camera. I just figured I'd say it because, hey, it came up right now. Okay? And so she can't do it. She can't do it. She cannot. I will check her. Okay, she cannot be disrespectful. I will check her. I will check my grown kids. Hey, hey, I, I don't care how old you are. My oldest daughter will be um, 39 next month. She will not walk into your house or anybody else's and I'm there. I will check her. Okay, I don't care how old. That's, not, that's just not okay. And so listen, I understand that we're trying to stay in a place that we're supposed, you know what I'm saying? Like, I don't want the devil to trick me and make me mad. You don't have to get mad. You can say what you need to say without being mad. And so last night I had to keep my composure. I'm sorry, you guys, we're going to get into the word, I promise. Um, and remember, you can always just kind of fast forward if you don't want to hear our, our intro. They do take long sometimes. And I do it too. And so last night I had to call um, and, and, and let these people know this is unacceptable. And I did ask the man, I said, would you lay on these covers? I know he didn't want to answer me because he works here, right? But would you want, I asked him. And so he barely shook his head. I know you wouldn't, sir. Now, I wasn't getting on him, but something had to be done for me. You, 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 ch we changing rooms. Okay. And one room was way over here and the, where I am now was way over there. I'm like, help me not to complain, but I still was able to speak up. Don't let's, let's remember how to, how to do that. We have to learn to navigate, um, this walk with the Lord. When something it, you need to speak up on, you got to speak up on it and you can do it without getting out of character. You can do it without getting so mad and angry. We have to learn to, to do that. So, yeah, I'm just, I, I just want to put that, I had to say, I had to say, it. listen, this is for all, all of us, right? This is for many, because sometimes I don't want to, well, it used to be, because I dress pretty good now, but sometimes, well, actually in a certain area, I'm still working on it. So, but sometimes we have to address when it, un, when it's uncomfortable. Do, come, let's, let's do better. Let's do better. Let's do better. That includes me too. Hey, that's for somebody. Somebody need to hear that. Okay. Listen, the Lord gave me a beautiful word. Um, all words are beautiful because I love them. Listen, also really quick, if you would like to sow, the information is in the description. Okay, be led by the Lord always. Never feel guilty for not having it to give. Do not feel guilty, please. Don't feel pressured. Don't feel obligated. Let the Holy Spirit lead you. And if he leads you to sow into me and to give, look, I'm, I'm appreciative because I'm out here. I'm out here. I'm out here in the field. Okay. I'm out here in these streets, the YouTube streets and the real, real streets. Okay. I'm doing the will of um, our father. Okay. So thank you so much in advance and may God bless you a thousand folds. So listen, the title of the message, as you can see already is stay in the field, Ruth or Rufus. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, but stay in the field, man or woman. All right. Stay in the field, Ruth. That's still the title because that's where we're going to be going. And so for whomever this word is for, the Lord is saying, stay in the field. Somebody is trying to come out. The Lord says, stop trying to come out of the field prematurely, right? You, you can't, it's not time yet. So stop trying to find your way out of the field and find your own solution to it. God, ha God is the answer. He has you there for a reason. He has you uh, um, out in the field for a purpose, right? D don't lose it. Don't, don't um, get lost in the fact of you tired. I get it. Me too. I am. Okay. I'm tired. So I'm ready for this process to come to an end. At the end of the day, I come too far to be messing stuff. I can't do it. I, 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 it's been too long. I'm not trying to forfeit nothing. Okay. You hear me? Nothing. I ain't forfeiting nothing. And so the Lord is saying, stop trying to find a way out. He has you there. Amen. Amen. You guys make sure you pray before you um, just grab any words that's yours. But a lot of time you'll feel it agree with your spirit. You'll be like, ooh, that hurts. It's for me, okay? And um, just take it as it is, right? 
And so um, for whomever this word is for, the Lord is saying, stay in the field. It's not time for you to come out yet, okay? You are right where God wants you. You are in alignment with his will. Hallelujah, okay? With his will for you. Um, again, God knows that you're tired. He understands that, right? But he also um, know that he has what he has placed inside of you. I'm sorry. He knows what he put in you. you. I know when we feel like I can't go no more, I can't, God knows you can take another step. He, he made us and he knows what's in us. Remember when we look at the story of Job, I'm like, no way, no how, no sir, no ma'am, no ham, no jam. Okay. But God know, knew um, what he put inside of Job. God knows what he put inside of Job. He, he, he knew Job could take it. He knew the parts where Job was going to get worried and say, certain things he said amen okay he already knew that all right if we could not handle it god would not put it on us he knows and we have to trust that like if god brought me to it okay he's going to get me through it right if he called you to it he's going to get you through it so stay in the field until it's time to come out god will let you know that so listen so ruth didn't ruth did what she had to do okay and i'm thinking about Ruth been in the field. Now, you guys just bear with me a little bit as I think about this story, okay? Uh, I'm sure some days it was hot. I believe she did work um, uh, glean in the field during the summer. Hot, hot, okay? It's hot, hot in the desert, okay? And so, um, and then thinking about her bending over, constantly picking up stuff. Now, my back tends to hurt a little bit too. I'm like, oh, I could stand too long a certain way or sit too long or bend over. My back starts to hurt a little bit. I'm just going to be honest, okay? Sister girl ain't getting no younger, all right? And so all of that, and then not including all of the sweaty, like yuck, okay? Yuck. Only time I want to sweat is when I'm working out. It makes me feel like I'm being productive, like something's happening and I'm getting, okay, some muscles. And so um, who knows what she felt, all right? And then, too, remember gleaning in the field at that time, everybody knew you was poor. Okay, they knew you were poor. All right, in gleaning. They knew you were poor. They knew that. So how, how does that make you feel? Now, I remember when I was on government assistance, right? And I had um, my food stamps, EBT card, whatever kind of food card that you may have. I, I didn't, you know, I'm trying to hide it in the grocery store, swipe. Now, not everyone. It's a humbling experience for, for many. Some people like, you know, it is what it is. I don't care. Now, I would definitely swipe the card now. I was I was then. And so, um, a little younger then. And so, I was like, you know, everybody going to see me, like, know that I have uh, EBT or whatever it's called in your city or state. It is nothing wrong with getting assistance. I just want to be clear about that. All right? Get what you need. All right? If God say, hey, do what you got to do. Okay? And so I'm just thinking about those kind of things when she was in there. Everybody knew that. So it was definitely a humbling experience. And, and uh, many of us are not going to fancy um, getting government assistance. We're not going to fancy that. We're not going to like that too much. You may not, right? You may like, you know, it may be a little embarrassing um, to just do that. But it is what it is and everybody needs help right? So don't, don't be embarrassed. This is just for the story. And sister girl been there and did that. Let me tell you something. During the time where my mom was on government assistance, we had um, food stamps. Like there was a little booklet. There was like coupons in it. It was a $1 coupon, a $5 coupon, a $10 coupon, and I think 20. I don't remember because I was young, right? And so, and all you could buy with that is food. That was it. Like you would, you know, and everybody knew. And so it was really embarrassing. So I'd be trying to go to the store and give them a dollar a, a food stamp coupon so I can get like 75 cents back. And I tried to do that a difference so I could at least have real money. Even if it was quarters, I was good. Okay. Anyway, so listen. Um, point being is, it's not easy to be in the field, all right, and um, and asking for help. But God knows, and listen, the Lord will provide however he chooses to provide. Did you know that sometimes the Lord would say, go ahead and borrow this change from somebody? If God tells you to borrow it, best believe you, you're going to be able to pay it back. And I've done that just a few times. I'm like, Lord, borrow. I don't have no money to pay back. God gave me the money to pay back. Because the particular person, now listen, just let God lead you. I'm not going to try to explain that. And whether you agree or not, it's, it's going to be okay. And so, um, so the Lord will provide. Now listen, sometimes you have to wait. And sometimes you have to wait longer than you want to. All right? Sometimes the wait is long. At the end of the day, it's going to come. We, we're somehow, some way, 
God's he's going to make it happen, all right? You're just not going to know when always. You're not going to know how. But God will always provide. Amen? He will always provide. And it's definitely humbling, okay? Humble, humble pie. We're eating a lot of it. So, I don't know exactly, again, how Ruth felt. The Bible really didn't say all of these things. But anyways, when I did that little bit of research, I, all I know is that... Um, you were poor if you were out there gleaning, trying to pick up the leftovers that the reapers dropped, okay, to get you some food for you and your family. Okay, so anyways, back to the topic. Stay in the field. There are many blessings attached to acts of obedience. Being in the field is being obedient to the Lord, and there are many blessings and rewards. You grow. You grow. Oh, will you grow? You will grow in the field. I think that's a prophetic word all by itself. You will grow in the field. You will grow in the field. All right? Growing in the field. Okay, so listen. So number one, we already know. We already know out here in these streets that God have you on where you're traveling to this place. And you, yeah, it's, it's a challenge. The trying or the testing of your faith will work patience in you. Oh, you're going to learn to be patient. Oh, it's going to happen. Okay? If you stay, it's going to happen. So, I want to read James chapter 1 and 3, but I'm going to read several different translations, so bear with me. NLT, for you know that when your faith is tested, your endurance has a chance to grow. I told you it was going to be some growing out there in the field. You're going to grow, baby. You're going to grow, okay? New King James Version, knowing that the testing of your faith produces patience okay we know it now when anything is in the field and you're doing and you all this you're gonna get some produce something's gonna be produced all right amen the amplified and i love 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 the amplified it says be assured okay you can know for a surety be assured that the testing of your faith through experience produces endurance leading to spiritual maturity we need that and inner peace that is the peace that only God can give. All right? That's the inner peace I'm talking about. We're not talking about any other. No. The peace that God is putting down in that. All right? All right, darling. Okay, so number two. Obedience is, is important. It's very, very important. Isaiah 1 and 19. If you are willing and obedient, you shall eat the good of the land. It's an award, a reward attached to it. If you are willing and obedient, okay? We cannot expect to constantly get the good things that God has promised if we are disobedient. Mm -mm. I'm sorry. Not going to happen. It's not going to happen. Just like with our kids. We do not reward bad behavior. We don't. We do not reward behavior that is unacceptable, right? God does not either. Well, you don't get a good reward. You get rewarded, but it ain't good. Okay? Okay, so. Amen, amen. Um, but the Lord will give you good gifts, all right, if you are obedient. You don't get them if you're disobedient, okay? We tell the kids, clean your room, get good grades, whatever, and they get a good reward for doing what we ask them to do, right? They are being obedient. This is what I ask you to do. These are the rules of the house, being obedient. And we say, you know what? You have been so good this week. Let's go for a treat. Let me get you something to let you know. I appreciate that. That that's good. I'm glad, I'm going to reward you for being obedient. All right, you follow the rules of the house. That's good. We're going to do it. I, I remember watching a um, I don't know what I did with that paper, but let's see if I remember. I watched a, a short on YouTube last night. I ran across it right, and um and the guy the the father had took I think he had about three kids and three children and he took them and I'm not sure if they fly often um, whatever the case may be so he took them on a flight to somewhere and the kids were already headed back to coach right some planes is just so tight you don't have no room or nothing um, and the stewardess the, the the flight attendant said no come back and they're looking confused like what's going on the daddy had upgraded them hallelujah catch that in the spirit the father had upgraded the kids to business class y'all it looked amazing talking about premium leg room spacious it was i was like i, I want i want to upgrade father my, my father okay and so the kids were like wow you should have seen it. it was so cute they were so grateful and the father said to them um something about always remember to be grateful you guys give me one second okay I 
have pillows in my chair. So, oh, oh. sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to edit that out. I like to apologize in advance. I ain't taking it out. And so the father um, said to the kids, um, as long as you guys are always grateful. He did not want them to forget. Because if they start to be ungrateful, then there's no reward in that. He said, but if you're always grateful. Remember to always be grateful. If you guys are, as long as you guys are always grateful. And these babies were indeed grateful. Listen, we have to be grateful, right? We, we can't think that we're entitled as long as we're grateful. I just wanted to share that. I wanted to share that right quick. Okay, so listen. Um, we want to have a good attitude, okay? And we also want to have a good attitude. Now listen, now sometimes I know we get a little attitude -y. Okay, you can be kind of attitude Judy. I'm sorry for anybody who just named Judy. I'm sorry. I just used to say attitude Judy because it rhymes. I apologize. Okay, so, but our attitude has to be good. So, and again, sometimes, you know, we, we might have one. Don't stay, don't, don't always have an attitude. You know what I mean? That, that's what I'm trying to say. Okay, but on, the, on our whole journey, um, we can't be mad. The whole journey we'd be mad. This, throwing that, dropping that, doing that. We can't do that. But it says, uh, yeah, it says willing, willing and obedient. Okay? You have to be willing. And if you're willing, you're going to have a better attitude. You're not, Father, I'm willing to go here. I'm willing to do what you say. I'm willing to sit in my car for hours until you move. Uh, we, we are all a work in pro progress, okay? Hallelujah and praise the name of the Lord. Okay, number three. For those that are on this God-ordained spouse journey, you are, are being prepared for your husband, ladies. Hus ladies, okay? And, and, and you are being prepared for your wife, men. Uh, We're going to make it clear up in here. Men, ladies get husbands. Men get wives. Ladies get get husbands yes men get wives all right female male and female created he them all right adam and eve together all right so let me make sure so stay in the field ruth or rufus make sure you stay there okay let's get into the scripture all right because i know this is going to be a little lengthy but i don't mind it's okay Thank you, Jesus. Let's get into some scripture. They are on my phone today because I needed to go back and forth with my notes. My daughter said that my um, phone case looks like a wedding dress. I mean, her to mind her own business. <laughs> okay, anyways. So let's go to... <laughs> if I don't get my life together. Okay, okay. Let's see. Let's see. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Y'all see how I'm turning to the side because that tooth over there? It's on purpose. Jeez. Okay, so Ruth chapter 2. Okay, and I'm in NLT, I believe. Yes. Let's start at chapter 2 and let's just read, okay? Because the Lord just, we're just going to do, do what God says to do. So, now there was a wealthy and influ influential man in Bethlehem. Right there, it already started off amazing. I, thank you, Jesus. Okay. Um, in Bethlehem named Boaz, who was of a relative of Naomi's husband, Elimelech. One day Ruth the Moabite said to Naomi, let me go into the harvest fields to pick up the stalks of grain left behind by anyone who is kind enough to let me do it. Naomi replied, all right, my daughter, go ahead. So Ruth went out to gather grain behind the harvesters. And as it happened, she found herself working in the field that belonged to Boaz, the relative of her father-in-law, Elimelech. Okay, listen, as it happened, she found herself working in the field that belonged to Boaz. We already know. We already know this was not an accident. We already know it was intentional. She was strategically placed there by God, okay? He is intentional, right? It was not happenstance. God strategically set it up. Thank you, Jesus. Okay? Don't think that the place that you are in is some random location. Nope, nope, nope. It's not. Okay, wherever God places you or is sending you, whatever the case, is absolutely intentional. Amen? Absolutely intentional. You have to know that. Let's read. 
um, verse 4 while she was there Boaz arrived from Bethlehem and greeted the harvester the Lord be with you he said and the Lord bless you the harvesters replied then Boaz asked his foreman who is that young woman over there who does she belong to and the foreman replied she is a young woman from Moab who came back with Naomi she asked me this morning if she could gather grain behind the harvesters she has been hard at work ever since except for a few minutes um, rest in the shelter so listen Ruth gleaned in the field from morning until evening now other translation says that until evening all right she was there all day she stayed in the field doing what she needed to do all right what she had to do right amen amen and so the um, the Lord, the Holy Spirit had me look up some definitions for the word glean, all right, to gather information or material bit by bit, all right, to gather something such as information bit by bit, to pick up, I'm sorry, to pick over in search of relevant material. This is all intentional, all right? The Lord is having you, listen, listen, let me just, let me just read this. All right, let me just read it. So in the field that the Lord have you in, you are learning and gathering valuable information. Wherever God sends you, you are collecting various things bit by bit. All right. I learned something in this location. I learned something in the last location. I learned something in the lo location before. All right. I'm gathering something. You all are right. Amen. You will need um, you're gathering certain things that you will need for your marriage and ministry. And yes, it's ministry first. So let me say it the other way for people who don't like me saying uh, marriage. It, not that it matters. I'm just, I just want to help somebody else so they'll be okay. All right. I'm, I'm, I want everybody to live saved. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. So for ministry and marriage, okay, you are gathering something from each one. And, and listen, at the end of the day, you know, whichever way we say marriage or ministry, ministry or marriage, at the end of the day, it's all about God. If we got that, we good. Because that's number one. If you mess up and forget that it's, it, it ain't about you, you got to remember it ain't about you. It ain't about us. It's about God. First and foremost, he has to be number one. In Revelations, does it say something? You have left your first love. Look, he has to be first. Amen? Amen. Let's, let's go. So wherever you are or were or whatever, wherever God's sending you, you are collecting, gathering, and learning bit by bit. Okay? Very important. Don't think that you're in some location um, for nothing. Let me tell you something. Even the days that you go, to your room or wherever God has you and you don't do quote unquote anything for two to three days you're still doing something something is being worked out in you all right it's not like you're sitting idle just because you're in that room all day I've been in my room all day for two days you may say or three days God is doing something one you pray and you know it all right you're studying your word God is depositing in you right he's bringing things back to your members oh, okay right I'm not gonna do that no more you are always getting something wherever God sends you it is never without purpose God is always about purpose amen 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 all right let me turn my phone back on let's go we are down to um where did I stop y'all uh, not that I can hear you <laughs> Okay, let's see. Uh, verse 8. Boaz went over and said to Ruth, Listen, my daughter, stay right here. Hallelujah. Stay right here with us when you gather grain. Don't go to any other field. Because I got my eye on you. Stay right behind the young women working in the field. See which part of the field they are harvesting and then follow them. I have warned the young men not to treat you roughly. And when you are thirsty, help yourself to water they have drawn from the well. Ruth fell down at his feet. All right. For one, um, you are protected. All right. Because he said, he told everybody, don't touch her. Okay. Don't touch. Don't touch her at all. You, there's protection. God, of course God does. Okay. He's amazing. He's going to protect you wherever he sends you. You're protected. All right. So verse 10, Ruth, Ruth fell down at his feet and thanked him warmly. What have I done to deserve such kindness she asked i am only a foreigner 11 yes i know boaz said but also know about but but i also know about everything you have done for your mother-in-law since the death of your husband i have heard how you left your father and mother and your own land to live here among complete strangers listen 
listen, listen, listen. Don't you think for one moment, okay, that your um, um, your actions, your character, your obedience have gone unnoticed. Mm -mm, mm -mm. First and foremost, God sees you. Amen. Okay. And secondly, so does your God ordained spouse. Either he heard because God revealed it or he see you on your social media, whatever the case may be, they know. All right. They know. Use a good one. Okay. Use a good one. So stay in the field that God has you so that he can complete the work in you. Right. Well, he has to until it's time. Time. Okay. While you're there, God's constantly doing something in you. So listen, and it will be completed. God's going to do it. Psalm 138 and 8, I think it is, you guys. Forgive me. All right. I hope that's okay. You know what? Let me just check it real quick. I just want to make sure. Sometime I write them down wrong. I like to apologize right now in advance. <clears throat> Psalm 138. And let's try it. Yes, Psalm 138 and 8. It says, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Okay, he's going to perf perfect. I'm sorry, you guys, words, even in my prayer time, but the blood of Jesus, we get this message out. Um, the Lord will perfect that which concerns you. Um, I, I know being in the field is not fun. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's, it, it is amazing. The time I spend with the Lord and to hear the revelations he gives me, it's amazing. Some of the rest that I get is some of the best rest. All right. So I know some of it's not fun, but some is amazing. We cannot leave out the good parts of the journey. There are some. Yes, it's hard, period. But there are some amazing times with the Lord. Right. Can't you agree? OK, I see your hand. <laughs> I see your hand. Amen. Um, no, um, being in the field is not fun, but it's going to make sense. And God will restore, replenish, strengthen, and establish you, right? First Peter 5 and 10, it says, and after you have suffered a little while. Now, listen, I know it says a little while. God's timing, not ours. You just got to keep that in mind. It's God's timing. All right? It's his timing. If you say it's a little while, well, to him it is. To us, you'd be like, okay, amen. It says, the God of all peace, who has called you to his eternal glory in Christ, will himself restore, confirm, strengthen, and establish you. And one translation says, um, and place you on a firm foundation. We're ready for, establish me, settle me. Hallelujah. All right. Amen. Amen. But I will not leave before time. I will not abort what, was, uh, what the Lord has put inside of me. Okay. I will not abort this promise. I will not abort the mission. Right. Let's see. I believe we're at verse 12. It says, may the Lord, the God of Israel, under whose wings you have come to take refuge, reward you fully for what you have done. Amen. It says, may the Lord, the God of Israel, reward you fully for what you have done. Amen. It says, um, well, it says, no. Yes, there is a reward for what you have done. Being in the field out of obedience to God, left your family, left jobs, left everything familiar, your hometown, been in isolation, uncomfortable and very humbling situations. Okay. Downright humiliating some of it. It's just, it just did not feel good. But yes, there is a reward. All right. Deuteronomy 28, 1 through 14. I believe. Read that read that okay we're not going to read it because we we already you know yeah we're not going to read that um verse 13 i hope i continue to please you sir she replied you have comforted me by speaking so kindly to me even though i am not one of your workers at mealtime boaz called to her he said come over here girl i'm sorry he did not he did not say that <laughs> i'm sorry I know some people just want to say, and this, thou hast said the Lord. I, I have a little bit of sense of humor and I love it. I enjoy the word of God. Okay. So um, this is for all those that love that. All right. At mealtime, Boaz said, come here, called her, called to her, come over here and help yourself to some food. I got something for you. You can dip your bread in the sour wine vinegar so she sat with his harvesters and boaz gave her some roasted grain here take a piece of my bread i don't really know what it was okay to eat so she ate all she wanted and still had some left over okay he gave her a good portion like she's like i don't even eat that much but okay let's see when ruth went back uh, 15 okay when ruth went back to work again boaz ordered his young men let her gather grain 
right among the sheaves without stopping her and pull out some heads of barley from the bundles and drop them on purpose for her and let her pick them up and do not give her a hard time okay do not give her a hard time i want us to remember that god has assigned destiny helpers for us okay he has designed destiny helpers for you they are already in place all right before you even get to the next location they are there hallelujah to the lamb of god hallelujah amen okay let's read verse 17 so ruth gathered barley there all day remember she stayed in the field amen and when she beat out the grain that evening it filled an entire basket she carried it back let me make sure i stay on track okay so she um i'm gonna read 17 again so ruth gathered barley there all day and when she beat out the grain that evening it filled an entire basket god will provide sometimes you may have to wait all day we we talked about that but um but 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 wait and try to wait well all right that's some very very important try to wait well you might have a little meltdown and a little tantrum let's try to get over that quickly you can have it okay i've done it i told y'all crying this chicken is good but i'm done gonna blah, 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 lifetime okay and so all of those things right but then get yourself together and say not my will but thy will be done all right, cry, wipe your eyes, dry them off, tell yourself you look good, girl. Okay, all right, you look good, bro. D -d Talk to yourself a little bit and worship the Lord. Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. For I know that you will provide. Amen. Amen. Okay, um, I know what it feels like. That's why I'm saying it, all right? Um, my weight this time, you guys, was shorter in the car. Like, I was ecstatic. I'm like, we only rated what? three and a half I, I don't know less okay much less oh much much less it was shorter than the last time last time was seven hours eight hours something like that let me tell you something i truly thank god for that and listen i know this is going to be kind of funny to some i only had to find a bathroom one time okay one time not back and forth lysol and spray and stuff one time let, let me tell you something hey i gotta count my blessings and that's one of them thank you jesus all right and so anyway let's let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go let's go da, 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 da. 18 she carried it back into town and showed it to her mother-in-law ruth also gave her um, roasted grain that was left over from her meal verse 19 where did you gather all this grain today naomi asked where did you work may the lord bless the one who helped you amen amen that's beautiful verse 20 oh no let's just keep going then who helped you so ruth told her mother-in-law about the man in whose field she had worked she said the the man the man i worked with today is named boaz <clears throat> verse 20 may the lord bless him naomi told her daughter-in-law okay he is showing his kindness to us as well as to your dead husband that man is one of our closest relatives one of our family redeemers hallelujah to the lamb of god let us just stop do a praise break mm, 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 right there okay for we know our redeemer lives hallelujah jesus christ right hey hey mm, ha, ha, hey hey okay our redeemer lives Jesus is our redeemer. We got to stop right there. That's going to mess me up. I might, I, I, that's going to mess me up. That's going to mess me up. When I think about my redeemer. Woo. Because your girl was a mess. Hallelujah. But he came to redeem. Hallelujah. In, in, in Jesus name. So listen. Some similar words for uh, redeem is regain, recover, get back, reclaim, have something returned. Okay. Rescue, buy back, repurchase and save. Let me highlight two words. That is rescue and save. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Thank you, Jesus. Mm, mm, mm. God is a good, good God. Let me see if I missed anything. Let's just go ahead and wrap it up, all right? Thank you, Jesus. Verse 21, then Ruth said, what's more, Boaz even told me to come back and stay with his harvesters until the entire harvest is completed. Look at that. Okay, provision, provision, provision. 
Uh, 22. Good, Naomi exclaimed. Do as he said, my daughter. Stay with his young women right through the whole harvest. You might be harassed in other fields, but you'll be safe with him. Amen. God knows who, who he chose for you. You're going to be safe with him. You're going to be able to be vulnerable with your God-ordained spouse, men and women. Okay? You're going to be able to be vulnerable. It's safe with them. That's a safe place that God has placed you in. Okay? He's placing you in. Amen? Uh, 23. So Ruth worked alongside the women in Boaz field and gathered grain with them until the end of the barley harvest. Then she continued working with them through the wheat harvest in early summer. And all while she lived with her mother-in-law. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. God is such a good God. I love him so, so much. Jesus is so good. All right? He is so good. I just wanted to wrap that up. Now, that was just some good. Let's go over to Ruth. Okay? This is the last bit of it, you guys. Let's go over to Ruth chapter 4. And let's read Ruth chapter 4. Four, starting at verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth and she became his wife. When he made love to her, the Lord enabled her to conceive and she gave birth to a son. The women said to Naomi, praise be to the Lord who this day has not left you without a guardian redeemer. May he become famous throughout all Israel. He will renew your life. Listen, listen. He will renew your life and sustain you, okay, in your old age. He will renew your life and sustain you. For your daughter-in-law who loves you and who is better to you than seven sons has given birth to him. Then Naomi took the child in her arms and cared for him. The women living there said, Naomi has a son. And they named him Obed. And he was the father of Jesse the father of David. Now we already know that Jesus came from the lineage of David. How beautiful is this story, okay? Stay in the field. Look at all of the goodness. Look at everything that you're going to gain by staying in the field, all right? You're preparing for ministry and you're preparing for marriage. There's so much in it. You have to learn to be patient and obedient when it's uncomfortable, when it does not feel good. I was not happy yesterday with the things, you know, I had to wait. And I saw I wasn't really thrilled about having to change rooms. We have to. Then I had to get myself together and say, Father, what is it that I'm supposed to learn in this situation? Amen. That's what we have to do. Now, I'm praying for us. Listen, don't get me wrong. I do understand. I understand how hard the journey is. I'm not saying it's a bed of roses. If it was, we would have breezed through it and we'd be like, hey, okay, just dancing in the field, right? We are working in the field. It is a purpose. And it is all about God first. But you get to reap some reward. Do not let anybody tell you different. You do get something out of it. Now, I love Jesus because of who he is. All right? Because he is God Almighty, the creator of the universe. If he didn't do anything else, he's done enough. I'm saved, right? He delivered me from myself and from other, some other stuff. He gave me back a peace of mind when I did not want to live anymore. God stepped in. And helped your girl out, okay? Just like you. We have a testimony. Drugs, alcohol, and other stuff that I would not mention right now. Okay? God did it. He did it. So he's, he, listen, he's done, he's done so much already. And God even saying, and I have more. Be willing and obedient. Stay in the field. This word is for somebody. Stay in the field until God tells you time. You're going to be okay and you're going to make it. Listen, remember, if you, were, if you want prayer, my email is in the description, right? I'm not just on here saying if you want to sow, just put, I will pray for you. Amen? I'm, I pray for us all the time. I pray for Read New Life. Whether you subscribe or you just stop by, know that I'm praying for you. Amen? You're going to make it. You, you're going to be okay. So listen, Ruth or Rufus, stay in the field. Stay where God have you. All right? There's purpose and there's reward in the field. Amen. That's the word for the Lord. I'm not even going to take a long time. Listen, if you're new in Christ, enjoy your new life with him. Sweetheart, it is the best decision that you could ever make. All heaven is rejoicing with you. If by chance you have fallen away and you're just not coming back, check it out. That's okay. Because the most important thing is that you're back now. Amen. Enjoy your renewed life with Christ. It is the best decision that you could ever make. And yes, all heaven is rejoicing with you too. May the spirit of the living God, that is the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, rest upon you and your family. I love you so much. And Jesus loves you so much more. I come to encourage you to stay in the field. All right? It is so important. There is purpose and reward 
in the field. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.